Emperor Jones by Eugene O'Neill appears to be a simple play, but as we discovered in the rehearsal, it is in fact a deceptively complicated play, and also a play very significant for the black man in today's society. James Earl Jones plays Brutus Jones, Stefan Girash plays Smithers, and I am Theodore Mann, the director. We invite you to join with us in the creative process that we all participated in to make this recording. I want to read you one thing, which, which is, um, I guess a black actor is more sensitive to, but for good reason. Um, O'Neill, the written word was his presentation of his character, of his play. Jones enters from the right. He is a tall, powerfully built, full-blooded Negro of middle age. His features are typically Negroid, yet there is something decidedly distinctive about his face. As if ordinarily there are not decidedly distinctive qualities in the Negroid face, yet there is an underlying strength of will, a hearty self-reliant confidence in himself that inspires respect. It's the word yet. It's a very bigoted attitude. No. If you look at his character descriptions of other in other plays, uh, I'm not concerned about whether yeah. he's had prejudice against uh, New Englanders or, or I'm concerned whether he had prejudice against black people, mm. and he had that that insidious prejudice that all mm. white people had and most still do about mm. black people. It is somehow an attitude of yet, although in spite of the fact that he's a black man, that he's right. somehow cunningly, innately keen, you know. Mm -hmm. I cannot ignore those mm -hmm. those, yeah. those facts, you know. Mm -hmm. And as great as O'Neill was, he, uh, and you might say that Shakespeare, when he says, um, uh, he refers to beauty as being white and uh, not like the the bloody Ethiop. Yeah, know? yeah. Those are those are patterns of prejudice, mm -hmm. although the person not, might not be mm -hmm. guilty of them himself. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just sure that uh, that O'Neill, being concerned about getting his play on, you know, mm -hmm. did what any young player would do. Which was, you mean, to disguise, disguise the character Christoph behind? Make him palatable to the present day audience. Uh -huh. To some extent, apologize for the manhood that he was ready to suck uh -huh. to you. Yeah. Oh, do you think that uh, Brutus is, is an unfair portrayal of. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't know. Yeah. But people that are hung up on images and uh, niggerisms. Uh -huh. Do you feel that the play is, I mean, in the, you know, the contemporary lexicon, you know, of, uh, like an Uncle Tom presentation of, uh, of the black man? Considering the choices he had, he certainly did pick the fun image, you know, mm -hmm. and that meant the acceptable image. And um, my argument breaks down with uh, all God's children, though, because, mm -hmm. um, except for presenting a, a psychic problem that occurs in racialism, you know, mm -hmm. which is the fact that his hero, his black hero in All God's Children is basically an intelligent person, mm -hmm. except when he gets into the classroom with his fellow competing lawyer students, law students, he becomes a blith blithering idiot, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a really interesting study mm -hmm. you know, of the problem of mentality and intelligence and so on. Well, but he gives uh, Brutus uh, tremendous intelligence. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I mean uh, no. try taking over a country, any country today or any time, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a quite it's an extraordinary man that's capable of doing that. His features are typically Negroid, yet there is something decidedly distinctive about his face, yet. See, and he was the only man that would, his profession was words. I mean, why didn't he choose another word? <laughs> uh, and mm. oh, you you mean that there's a prejudice involved in the fact that his his uh, features are distinctively Negroid? No, no. In the fact that yet, in spite of the fact that, that he's just distinctively, there's something that's uh, so and so something uh, keen and un-Negroid about it. <laughs>
but I mean, I think the tragedy that, that is involved here is the fact that the potential of Jones was so great. I just, I just hate to think that O'Neill is prejudiced in any way. I don't think know? he is. To, yeah. I, I don't I mean, think just he a product. I mean, I, th I think he sort of pet was above his time. You know. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, there's a reason that this I mean, play I, you know, has, has for, for a long time, has not been popular with black people, especially the, the black middle class. And it's because it, it is such a uh, a full a full out mm -hmm. uh, dealing with this kind of a man, you know, with this kind of a character, whether it's a caricature or not, is it, it, it becomes it threatens character because Donil just makes it so bloody full out, you know. Mm -hmm. But what what is it that they? Uh, re, uh, I mean, they don't read the character description. Okay, so now no, we no, they, Jones. they 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 just think of Emperor Jones as that that this and that nigga. You yeah, know, a this and that nigga. Yeah. I mean, without any brains. Uh, they're not concerned about what what O'Neill invested in him to his intelligence. They're concerned about his manner, his style, really. Mm -hmm. And and that that's disappearing now. The Black Panthers would not be bothered by this character at all. I see. But the middle class was, mm -hmm. you know. The only image they, they really mind is the Uncle Tom one. The the nigga who, who, who is uh, brutal and crude doesn't bother them at all. In fact, as long as there's, there's a display of manhood and power in that character, it's all that they're really interested in. They like my uh, Jack Johnson, and I, I loaded him with niggerisms, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, whereas the middle class got very, very uptight about it, you know. Uh -huh. and, and I think. Uh, the Emperor Jones could be a great, a great could be a, a great revival of that mm -hmm. image now, with mm -hmm. uh, with a new attitude of, mm -hmm. and, and the young black people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a study of power, and that's yeah, what they would do. Right. Well, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, also Brutus is uh, is uh, his own man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's made his own opportunity, right. you know, yeah. all by his own uh, wits right. and strength and uh, and intelligence. But I mean, that he's a uh, I mean, he brings the white society with him. I mean, that's what he's carrying on his back. I mean, that I, that to me is really what the play, what O'Neill right. was really writing about, was this guy who had this fantastic potential was encumbered by white civilization. Yeah. And that's why I think all those dissections, you know, all those recalls go to show you how that's all on his, has been on his back, you know, layer by layer by layer. And if you could get back to native, yeah. you know, that, that he would be, he could in fact lead these people. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that he says is a white Christian, uh, a Jewish <laughs> it's American, philosophy. Yeah, yeah, it's American capitalism. Well, it's all Western civilization. Yeah, right. You know, that, that possession is king. Probably, sure. And that's why, this, that's why the country, I mean, O'Neill predicted this, not only in this play, but in practically every play that he wrote that materialism would be the destruction of America. So that the whole, this whole bull about the generation gap, he's been observing this now since yeah. 1920. Yeah. You know, of what, was, what is going to happen and that how it was going to catch up, that, there, that the, the God was not what they said, Jesus Christ, but the God was the dollar, the God was possession, and that that was empty, and that this was going to have its payback on, on future civilizations. Well, it's, it's catching up right now, yeah. So that the kids see their parents, and the parents have the swimming pool, and they have the house, and they have the car, and they got nothing. Yeah. I mean, they have nothing in that they have no uh, enjoyment of natural things. Yeah. They can't communicate with one another. Yeah. The wife is out with somebody else, he's out chasing, and the kids see this. They may not see it, but they sense it. Uh, Edmund, in, in, uh, you know, in all long days' journey tonight, Witness is in the presence of a father who has dedicated his life to one character that is because it w he was successful at that character, right, 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 right. and a mother who's freaked out on drugs. You right, know? right. And it's he it, it could be a kid today. You know? That's right. You know? Thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, just like snapping your fingers. The father says, "What the hell was it that I was looking for? I wonder that was worth all of that money." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That speech is really the. It's. Is the embodiment of the uh, uh, sadness of America, of this, you know, dedication to something that, is, that doesn't mean a goddamn thing. You know? It's a hard lesson to unlearn about possession, you know, material possessions. You know? How that came to be God in this country, I don't know. 
may, this must be some, some way connected with uh, Christianity. I, I think, I don't believe in God anymore, I believe in gods. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, literally, that capitalism has a god. The god is money. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it has become uh, really religious now. Yeah. Like, the Western world doesn't really respect property. It pretends to. Mm -hmm. But, it re like, slumlords, they don't respect the property that they own. They yeah. respect the money that's that it makes. Flows Excellent. through that sure. property, and once the money stops flowing through the, that property, that building has no value. Right. Craftsmanship has no value. In our society, a man is important if he has money. Yeah. A man's not important if he's an artist in the society. I mean, if he is an artist who makes money, yeah. he's important. But if he is an artist who doesn't make money and doesn't sell his paintings, he's completely unimportant. Yeah. There's no no uh, uh, observation or analysis of him, his work itself, you know, of whether that's any good. I don't think you know be heaped on Jesus because of Christianity, because of what the bad Christianity is in now, or God. But I think it can be heaped on uh, old old Jehovah. I think old Jehovah. Is well, a it bad could be. God. Maybe it goes back to <laughs> maybe it goes, goes back, back to the Jewish religion. Right? Well, it does. In a way. Yeah, because God that's where it all starts. I mean, Christianity is out of that. If you're gonna put over yourself a, a, a destructive God, then it's gonna allow you to be much more destructive. Mm -hmm. Other other lands, other cultures, uh, like the ancient Greeks, uh, even the ancient Romans, to some extent, oh, they got they got hung up on power in a way that we're just beginning to feel taste. Mm -hmm. But uh, ancient Africans, uh, ancient Orientals, even ancient Scandinavians, uh, there were gods, mm -hmm. and that somehow made a bit more sense. Because, yeah, indeed. You mean there were many gods? There were many, yeah. <laughs> there, there were gods that served all kinds of functions. And I think mm -hmm. there were gods that misled you and gods that uh, guided you properly, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's still going on. Mm -hmm. you know? I think the, the god of capitalism is misleading us. Because mm -hmm. he is a god of wrath and all that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. The next discussion takes place between James Earl Jones playing Brutus Jones and Stefan Girash playing Smithers, his white cockney quote, business partner. And in this uh, last, uh, latter part of the scene one, Smithers has tried in various ways to get Jones uh, to reveal uh, his past, to uh, get Jones to reveal about his uh, whereabouts of money that he may have hidden, to get Jones to reveal about uh, uh, what his plans are for escape, and uh, m these and many other uh, attempts uh, Jones uh, rebuffs and does not allow Smithers to goad him. So Smithers makes one last attempt to taunt him, and he says, You ain't going at that way, are you? But you think I'm gonna sneak out the back door like a common nigga? <laughs> the Emperor Jones. Lead the way he come. Hey, that black trash don't dare stop him. Not yet, he's ways. This sort of implies that uh, in terms of protocol, Smithers has often reminded Jones the best way to do things. And, uh, and I accept it. Oh, wow, wow. But mm -hmm. it, then I make it my idea. Yeah. What? Oh, do you think I was going to make that mistake? Right. Oh, you must be out of your mind, man. I'm still emperor. <laughs> ah, you're right. So whatever he, advise, whatever he offers, I take it, absorb it, eat it, and make it my own. Right. It's not yours. Right. <laughs> it wasn't right. your idea. You thought, oh, you thought I was really going to go out that back door, huh? Well, <laughs> the Emperor Joe's leave the way he comes. And that black trash don't dare stop him. Not yet, least ways. I actually want him to go, mm -hmm. you see. At the same time, I want him to, to, to start the drum, the who's the fear thing in it. I mean, I don't want, I'm not thinking that clever, but mm -hmm. I want him to go. I think it is that clever, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think Smithers has much more of his, his scheme plotted out than, than, of course, he, than he exposes. Yeah. Yeah, but he wants he's to... Thought, he's a very quick thinker, I think. He's very, really... Yeah. But yeah, I know that if I say to you that it's uh, terrible, you'll go, you'll, you, with your ego, and, your, and your, you'll go. Right. I mean, I could say, oh, it's a snap. Yeah, you can get through the forest like nothing, you know? Right? Yeah. But what I'm doing is, is giving you, you keep giving him a warning? I don't know, maybe he already know he has to go because they're there, so it's just an added, uh, making him more insecure, more frightening. What's curious is that uh, 
Yeah, the only thing you say that's insinuating that I'm I might be as scared as you is you say you'll find your bloody hair at least well my hair yeah standing yeah. on end. Yeah. You're not talking about me. Mm -hmm. You talk about yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your yeah. bloody hair. Yeah. Well, maybe you should try. It. Maybe you should enjoy it, though, Stefan, rather than you know, uh, you know, you know, like you're frightened yourself. But uh, uh, you know, play play against that. You know, give it to him again, totally against that by being kind of, uh, you know, well, O'Neill says malicious. Malicious is it means it says, yeah, malice is with the fourth with the fourth thought. You know, it's with the enjoyment of yeah, that first the thing. Part. You know, what did you enjoy? You enjoy the whole thing about the sweet, black yeah. soul and the war dance and getting their courage yeah. worked up. And I know at the same time as I'm talking about it, one attitude. I know what I'm saying and the effect on on him. <clears throat> I could be laughing about you know how they. Uh, <coughs> Laughing at yeah, them. They, they carve people up and they do it. They yeah. like to, well, that's, they, I think that's a good attack on it rather than that, that makes, that gives it yeah. more validity for him because you're, you're, you're undercutting it, you know? And then he takes, takes from that what he wants to take, but you've laid in the damage that you want. Mm. You know, the images that you want. It's actually, it's a safer way for you to do it rather than this than to, uh, uh, it's a way of taunting him uh, um, abstractly by making light of it, you know, mm. by fooling mm. around with them, you know. Me. It's like you said, you know, they're so silly with their blood, <laughs> silly uh, with their tricks and their devils and all that kind of stuff. It's also so, But you know, at the same time that you're saying to him that you're ringing a bell right at his head because that's, you know, the devils and charms and silver bullets. It's all one world. And I guess if you hit, it's all right for you to do those sounds under yeah, the show yeah. to show what effect it's having. Like, if, if I gotta push it away every time he throws one at yeah. me, that means it's, I, I, they, they really have some effect on me. Yeah, but. <laughs> me? Not me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, while he's talking. Yeah, I think, I think those are good to have, that, you know, your, the, your, the response. I mean, we do that in life. I mean, yeah. this is a thing we totally forget on stage. Is the grunting that goes on in life? The grunting, you know, yes, right. Him, that, you know, people are talking and you. Get get it. <laughs> no, but on stage, it suddenly gets terribly quiet. Doing other people. Yeah, it gets terribly quiet. Well, some actors don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Look, son, when I do this, you stand still and roll these stars on. Yes. Yeah. No, but that's a uh, this the human the normal human, human sound. sound your moment, I have mine. I'm doing it. Yeah. Stand there. You'd be quiet, right? <laughs> but you know, if we listen to these tapes, you'll hear, uh, you'll hear, you know, when you were not aware that you, when we were just talking, yeah. you know, you'll hear somebody say, mm, you know, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like, and then times when you're anxious to get in, but you can't, you gotta let the person finish their thing. You go, you ah, 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 no. you know, like that. But those those are the things that should be in play. Yeah. You know those kind of the human responses. You know that are the inarticulate, in, non-words. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing they discovered, you know, they made it a, a cliche. You know, is that a line doesn't end? I mean, right. Like, uh, Jerry Page, and you know, they, they have that kind of. Uh, Kim is always doing it. You know, mm -hmm. sort of. A, I mean, who knows? We stop at that. It's written. We stop at that point. Yeah. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have ideas if you're not asking for an answer, mm -hmm. and it happens earlier. It's supposed to, the other speech came up there. You know, he started your your, your your idea started to form before you got so you to say the actual word. Yeah, he, he goes on, finishes it. Right, but the impulse starts earlier yeah. or continues on. Jones has covered a great deal of distance now, from the palace to the edge of the woods. He is tired, he is alone, and he begins to talk to himself, and he begins to talk to the most extreme part of his body, to his feet. Feet? You hold them up your hand. Fine, and I certainly hope you ain't blistering them. Time you get a rest. 
feet. He's still in the pink. Right. A little mite feverish. Cool yourselves. Remember, you done. You done got a long journey get before you. You know, and it's that special uh, way of. Um, it's a different tone when we talk to ourselves. You know, it's 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 there's something that's more intimate about it. It's it's, it's another person. Yeah. You know, the feet is it becomes another. Yeah. You know, it's somebody to talk to. Right. And it's something to talk very. To. You know, it's something very special. You know, it's it's. Uh, Same way I would talk to my horse if you yeah. had a horse. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, it's a, there's a different level of uh, tone, volume, intimacy. Yeah. yeah. When you're talking to your, to your feet, you know. And it's interesting that he picks the feet because the the really the thing we uh, least kind of connect with, yeah. except that Jones has a big thing about his feet, you know. And the very first thing with Smithers, Smithers, you know, he's, he's, he says, "Feet do your duty." Yeah. You know, I mean that that replaces horses. Yeah. Yeah. It's people that have to be on their feet all the time. Well, as he had to be on Pullman car thing, you know. I mean, people that didn't really have the luxury. You know, yeah. the feet do have a special world and existence. They they are like dismembered things that are part part of the body but separate from the body. Well, and Smith is going on with all this niggerism business, and Jones is, a, you know, very defensive. You know, feet do your duty could have come right out of a Step and Fetch it movie. Absolutely. You know? And I think Jones puts it on a bit. Yeah. Me, like, yeah. Well, I hoofed it then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, feet. I'm yeah. not ashamed. But now I think it's, he's not making fun of them. Anymore. No. You know, right. It's, now it's for real. It's like, it's like a rabbit foot, you know. It's yeah. Kind of he needs them. Right. The drums suddenly come into Jones's consciousness, and he says, Bush niggas. <laughs> Fuck the bush niggas. <laughs> I wonder if they don't get sick of beating that drum. He got a whole body with him, you know, he carries yeah. a whole entourage. That's right, and they get more and more. I never realized this, this is the key to this whole the second whole, part, really. Yeah, it's... A, after the first time I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, the whole rest of the play. Yeah, right. Yeah. His identities. Yeah. How but I mean, get, that's madness. Yeah, right. I mean, that's, you're right at it, you right. know, when you start that right. kind of stuff. I mean, you know, if he was sane, he'd be totally silent. He just runs right. in a thought and right. just be going yeah. around and around and around. Yeah. I mean, it's not only because it's a play and he has to talk out. You're right. But, but he's flipping. Yeah, yeah. he's flipping and he's yeah. trying to hold reality can only be by communicating with somebody. Right. So he's making him up. Right. You know, and he starts making him up. He starts making him up within himself yeah. and then extending down the length of his body. Now he goes out there and he starts saying he's got his, his own conscience inside of him, Brutus. Now he goes out and he goes to the auction people, he goes to Jeff. You know, you see, see he's got his whole, he's got a truckload along with him. Right, right, right. He's okay. carrying. <laughs> Jones suddenly hears noises in the forest. In his fear and loneliness, he believes them to be people. He fires his pistol. The conversation that follows this is a discussion of the many people living inside of Brutus Jones's mind. You sure you gave the game away when you found that that nigga's gonna find you for certain. For certain, you you better get out of here. <laughs> you give the game away when you find that shot. It just is more personal here somehow. It's like uh, you know, that's what it took care of that yeah. bang, then. You know, you should have done that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly. It's, it's, uh, you, you I guess you can have. Uh, you, I guess you can break it down into as many personalities as you yeah. want. You know. Well, I, I think it's interesting to keep it to Brutus and have the conflict between Brutus and yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. And blaming him for things that that, that you've done. Yeah, that sure. you've done. Yeah. So then he, he starts getting. I think he. There's a salvation somehow in finding different people to blame. Mm -hmm. But the more it comes back to yourself, that's the salvation that you start, start losing yeah. the salvation. You yeah. realize you gotta change yourself eventually. Yeah. Which he does eventually with the Baptist thing. That's right, yeah. Well he goes he goes back past the Baptist thing. Goes, yeah, yeah, right. Eventually. So he actually turns to silence though. Yeah, right. Yeah, finally. So what are you saying? I mean you're uh, saying that No, it's still Brutus. Yeah. Yeah, it's still Brutus. Yeah. But he has a conflict now in that first I say 
that's all there was to it. But then, you know. You're safe, safe now. You're safe now. Right, right. I solved it for you. Right. But you shouldn't have done that. Right. You're still on Brutus, right? Yeah. Right. But right. Without, now I'm putting something I just did onto him. Yeah. Right. So that, that makes right, it somehow right. Right. Yeah. more insane. I think, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Than to blame somebody else. Oh, yeah. I don't think it should be somebody right, else. Right, no, right, I, right. I think it should okay. stay, stick right on Brutus. Yeah. Exactly what you did. Mm -hmm. Is now his fault for having done it. Right. <laughs> You're the other person. Yeah, right. Yeah. Look, I just happen to be passing by. <laughs> 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 and that was Thomas. Jones has fired his revolver again. This time at a remembered character, Jeff. He runs into the forest and, exhausted, he now says, <sighs> I must have put some distance between myself and... Is this the first time he asks, talks to the Lord at all, mentions the Lord's name, Jim? Yeah, you're right. I think O'Neill would be so happy. At this yeah. discovery you're making? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Because, you know, a writer must... I mean, he must have sat down in his private room and out. wrote, said, I'm going to talk to somebody here and somebody... He must have done the yeah. same thing with yeah. discovery. And the Lord, yeah. Once once the apple lets go off, he, he's conscious of... To, yeah. Jesus said he put on the shelf. Yeah, that's right. Back to that. So uh, I mean, it happens right at that moment. He gets rid of that stuff and then yeah. he goes right into it. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, you know? it is. <laughs> so I mean, this this whole now this whole conversation coming up here is all directly to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Everything else has let him down. Yeah. You know, all of, all I mean, the other. Brutus couldn't yeah, help him. Right. Jeff didn't help him. Right. The formless, well, they're, they're not. They're, they're turning helping. against him. They're yeah. just things that are turning against yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, they're all things of his imagination, though, you know. It's as if since he cannot, he, he even tried to command the trees, like, hey, hey, you guys, but trying to yeah. do something. Since his, his authority is slipping, then he must go to the next higher authority mm -hmm. that he believes in. Right. Well, which yeah, is right. the Lord. Right, and that's not going to pay off either. Mm -hmm. Through his imagination and the sounds of the forest, Jones recreates for himself his time in the chain gang and goes through and relives again his killing of a prison guard. He throws himself on his knees and says, The prayer thing, Jim, it's, uh, it's, it's a, there is a whole rhythm to it. Uh, I mean, there's the, oh, Lord, Lord, oh, Lord, Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, Lord Jesus, hear my prayers, of course, and of course, and I know that. That beat, you know? That's a whole, that's one, I know it. When I catch Jeff cheating with the loaded dice, my anger cover comes to me and I kills him dead. Lord, I done wrong. That's another that's <laughs> another beat, you know? When that God hits me with the whip, my anger overcomes me and I kills him dead. Lord, dead, Lord, I done wrong. That's another beat. And down here with these poor poor who raises up the rest of the sea, I steals a grip, and I done wrong. I know it, yeah. You know? I mean, we can put I done wrong and I knows it together because that seems to repeat all the time. You know, after I done wrong. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's that kind yeah. of, it needs that it kind of it. Incantation. incantation. Yeah, exactly. Right. I don't want to make it just incantation because I, uh, then it. It's like Jones pays Jesus some dues here. Yeah, exactly. Some genuine yeah. dues, I think. Yeah, confession. He's and then he confession. says, I've got that over with. Yeah, now I'm yeah, safe. That's now. right, right. Now, here, we, you, you want it to sound less southern, and I, I'm finding it very difficult, frankly. Mm -hmm because of the, the way it's written. And maybe it would be a matter of my lightening the voice that is higher I think pitch. It's a, I think it's a progression here of, uh, of dialect. I think he loses less and less. Yeah, I, mean, I think he, loses he starts more whiter more. and goes and becomes more and more. I mean, certainly Becomes here, blacker. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, certainly here, you know, he's back to the whole, you know, that, the whole sort of, you know, that he's getting down, really right, back down uh, to the roots again, yeah. you know. He's going from white man and that kind of, I mean, he's, yeah. you know, he, he's, he is a black man, so there's a certain inflection, but yeah. he's a, a city man, and, you know, and, and, and black Better people, white behavior, black people yeah. in the city sound much different than anybody, you know, than right. country black yes. people, you know. So that, I, I mean, I think it's a progression of dialect going backwards. Yes. Right. You know, this is blacker <laughs> than he was in the first, yes. you know. Right. 
Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. You know, he's really going at it. He's really giving himself back yeah. into it. Yeah, Yaza, Yaza. I'm yeah, coming. Yaza, sir. Yaza, Yaza, yeah. I'm coming. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've done wrong. You yeah. know, yeah. he's really lay he's laying it on there. You know, to, to, you know, for identification. Yeah. That would be a marvelous and an exciting thing if we could make that yeah. dialect distinction. Yeah, so the first scene is one I really have to be yeah. concerned about in terms of yeah. not having it too heavy. Right. Yeah. Each one is a little there's a little bit more that he, he goes back, you know, yeah. and I think that he when he gets back into this one, you know, into the prayer thing, he's really he's back there. Mm -hmm. And that old that kind of sound. That's so really when when he is rolling his R's a bit more with Smithers, that's really unnatural for him. Yes, that's why I pointed out that particular word. Right. You yes. know, well, what does it say? say? Premeditated or precipitated? Yeah. You know, uh, is it, yes, it's perceived. a word that is perceived. not quite comfortable perceived. in his mouth, you know. Yeah. Perceived. I ain't perceived. Yeah. Yeah. So he's working hard to sound more proper with Smithers especially. Right. Be interesting, if, if, if his first, before he sees Smithers, if he's very heavy, who that? Who dare whistle in my palace? Yeah. Very right. heavy. And then good. with, oh, it's you, Mr. Smithers. Yes, yes, yeah. Very good. So that yeah. he's putting on the dog with it, yeah. 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 and tries to hold it throughout the whole conversation with Smith. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe because this is what happens to me in real life when I get emotionally upset, I usually get more southern. Yes. Well, so we when all, he gets pissed go back off, to our roots, right? You know, yeah. Yeah. So it can vary slightly in the scene with Smithers, but it should be. He should always be attempting, attempting to, to sound be, yes. citified, yes, and sophisticated. Yeah, white, you yeah, know. White, yes. yeah. Whiter than Smithers, yeah, you know. Right. I think that that's why O'Neill put a cockney there, because sure. they were already intimidated because of their sound. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the, uh, the, the cockney. Yeah. He's an outcast in his own society, yes. you know. And his, his language is not proper. Right. And it's, it, it, in a way, sure. it has comic value. Yeah. You know, the, the two of them <laughs> were both trying to speak a language that's really not comfortable to yeah. them. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive this poor sinner. Keep them away, Lord. Keep them away from me. It's not that drum sounding in my ear that begin to sound ain't in two. Lord, preserve me from after this. All right. I ain't scared of real men. Let them come, Miss. But them others. Oh. Now, if that doesn't disturb you too much, I think uh, I like that that's a better that. form. In other words, he, he goes into it trying to reach the Lord, and then it gets, then it starts spilling out into mm -hmm. the real yeah. world as he sees it now, and them haints and them drums. And then, and then it should get. No, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It might seem too tame, but. Uh, uh, well, uh, I think it's better than some sort of phony, agonizing, plaintive sound. Mm. We don't speak big to the law, do we? Mm. It's all, uh, it is very interior. But it is in the nature of a confession that each one of those yes. things is an awareness that they were terrible things to do. Mm. And that terrible things to tell. Mm. You know, I mean, let's, don't, let's not minimize them. Right. You know, of course, I mean, that's yeah. in our our view of looking back, you know, mm -hmm. but for Brutus, those. I mean, I think that that's really the key to Brutus, you know, because he, you know, he's he's been saying all along, sure, I did this and I did yeah. that, and I did it because I wanted the long green yeah. green stuff. But he has his morale. He has a sense. He has a knowledge of morality. Yeah. Right. The Lord. The Lord will preserve me from them haints after this prayer. Mm -hmm. After this. Mm -hmm. So I'm after getting back on God's side. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm concerned about is actually from, from scene six. Six. Because uh, yeah. the, the one, one where he gives out with the prayer, yeah. that self-pity, that, 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 that scene five, that self-pity is, is accounted for. Because yeah. he's wallowing in, in his, you know, the mea Baptist, culpa. Yeah. Right. And then uh, scene six, oh Lord, what is I going to do now? He goes on and on about this bullet. Pity mm -hmm. me, poor me. Oh. And 
I just don't think that carries well mm -hmm. the way I've been approaching it, and I've got to find mm -hmm. there's the fear in it, there's the the demoralization, uh, oh Lord. Well, isn't maybe it, a uh, disgust. Uh, yeah, but isn't it, I mean, it's, uh, I mean that the, uh, the walls have closed in on him where, I mean, he's now shot off all the bullets. So yeah. the one bullet he's got left is to kill himself with, and he doesn't want to do that. You know, because he says here, only the silver bullet silver one left, I've got to save that for luck. I mean, you know, Lord, don't push me to you, you know, in other words, don't box me in to make that, that choice, because that's the only thing I oh, can I left see. now, uh, you know? You're seeing this as another conversation with, with God. A different yeah, kind of, that's right. That's good. Right, that's right. good. Yeah. I need something direct like that, so it yeah. doesn't become a uh, 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 the wrong kind of meal. Yeah, I mean, God, you know, I only got one bullet left, and what, you know, I, what, what choice do I have? I, I mean, I don't want to kill myself. You know, I gotta save that. That's for good luck, is what he's saying. You know, don't you understand, don't you understand me, God? Don't you see what the problem yeah. is? Yeah, right. And if I shoot that one, I'm a goner. I'm gonna put left with the silver. Only the silver. I mean, I think it's a direct. It's it's a non-prayer. Good. But it's a direct conversation to the, the Lord. Lord. Good. Right. Fine. That's different than that isn't then therefore different than five, and four. That's the particular one with the uh, the uh, chain gang thing, the, the killing of this guy. But I mean, when he, he starts in this thing here, you know, I mean, symbolically, it's very interesting. You know, the symbolically taking off the jacket and taking mm -hmm. off the spurs, you know, that's discarding, first of all, the very thing, I mean, prior to five, which is when he becomes a Baptist again, yes, yeah. that uh, in four, he discards that in preparation yes. to become a Baptist again. Yeah. You know? He never prays. It's interesting. He doesn't. Why doesn't he pray with the, the stuff on? Mm. You know, with all this stuff, because they are the symbols of everything that he believed as a Baptist. Mm -hmm. You know. You mean the? Uh, I mean the the the, 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 the the You know, this. That's the, a defiance of God. That's right. Yeah. Because so he, he was playing around God. with the witch doctors and all right. that stuff. Yeah. You know. It's a turncoat thing. That's right. And he also knows that what he was doing was you know, was wrong, you know, yes. bleeding these people right. dry. That's certainly the first push of that particular one, which is scene four, to, you know, to sort of getting himself ready, yes. you know, to go to go back to that. Yeah. Because he does right there, and he refers to it, which is interesting. Don't the Baptist prayer parson tell you to do it that many times? As you civilize, you like them uh, other ignorant uh, niggas. You know, that's just, now he's, so he hasn't, when did he mention Baptist before, outside of the time that Smith has brought mm -hmm. it up? Here, it is the first time he has mentioned Baptist when he's by himself, and it's in preparation for the next scene that comes. And it's the whole, the taking off of the, it's like, you know, when you go to church, you, you, it's a particular kind of uh, way you have to dress. It's a, sort of, it's a kind of ritual. I think you have to approach this beginning of scene four is like, a, you know, an unconscious yeah. ritual that he's... Uh, and you feel a necessity there that you have to be talking to somebody? Or just bitching at himself. Yeah, bitching, I think just so. bitching away, you know. <laughs> I mean, from the time he said, the Lord, that's, he's had it with the Lord. Yeah, he, he doesn't, he's, he's finished. finished. Only, only the things that are happening to him, like, he doesn't relate to ideas and arguments. No. Anymore. But I mean, he, in that paragraph before, Dad, this, this feel like a clear, etc. That paragraph before that, the beginning of scene six, that's where he finally has it out and finished yeah. with the Lord. Yeah, right. Well, not finished because he, he, he refers. Does he go back to it? Yeah. yeah. Lord protect this sinner. But I think he should have left God. He should have left the Western God. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of the motive of his life, he wants yeah. to get him back to his original yeah, God. It's like, what, what, what is I doing? What is this place? Seems like, seems like I know that tree. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could take that on the literal level. That is where he started out, you know, here in this particular event, uh -huh. circumstance. But it's also going back symbolically. To, to Africa, yeah, yeah, yeah. The stones, the river, the tree. You know, I mean, it's. I mean, I think it has. It, for me, it has should have deeper significance than just the literal place. Yes. You know, I think yeah. it's uninteresting. Yes. It is right. just that. Right. Now, this is the. This is the. This is the most. 
The most difficult speech, I think, in the whole play is on fi page 51. Uh, that is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 51. Mm -hmm. What? Because I don't know. It comes from the sound of the chained slaves, the wail. Yeah. Which and is they will fade out and you will stay in. Yeah. And you will still be rowing, Jim, as water. Yeah. You know, distinguishable yeah. rushing river water will yeah, come in. Right. And as that begins to predominate, you'll fade out on the other rowing thing. So there's the despairing wail that becomes Jones' sound. He's transfixed. Yeah, but I mean, isn't it that Jones here has uh, is praying primitively? I mean, he's trying to I mean, reach back before this dialogue here. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That, that that's what I'd like to establish. Yeah. I think, I think he does. And then he says, "What am I doing?" Yeah, that's right. So he catches that. himself doing something he doesn't really understand. He doesn't know it because it's a complete uh, heredity throwback. Yeah, this is praying to uh, uh, African God. Mm -hmm. I think on his idea about the, it's like he's in a trance. What was that? Um, the expression on his face is fixed and stony. How would you get that just with the audio? Mm. Obsessed glare, st moves with deliberation, oh, yeah. like sleepwalker, trance, zombie, yeah. all that. And throws an and I mean, goes down on his knees. You yeah. Know that, I mean, the sound that comes out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, rushing water, you it's, fade down. It's like he's going the into water. automatic behavior with the African prayer. Yeah, that's right. African chant. Where that's they, right. Uh, and, and I want to let some residue of that trance-like state be in when he goes into the English again. I want to make it understandable and have right. a life to it, but well, what is that doing? What is this place? It seems like, seem like I know that tree. I, I don't want to get loony, but uh, yeah. something I want to get. Yeah, well, then why not loony? He is loony, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, if we can make a choice. Is he loony or is he really just he's calm for the first time? Maybe, you know? I mean, Both, probably. You know. The trance thing suggests that, you know? Yeah. I mean that he's in a uh, he's uh, he's not in a wild state. <clears throat> he makes several observations, then he responds to it with saying, "Lord, golly, God, glory, glory, I'm scared." As oh, glory, I'm scared, I'm scared. And then he goes back to the Lord. It's a concession. Yeah, it's very. Better good. session than I've ever had on this plate. Really? really? Nice. <laughs> that that pleases me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Uh, so I, mean, how do they, you, I, don't, I don't understand how do they approach the other you, people. When you're doing it on the stage, well, we got a strong actor. He can take care of the whole thing. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. And the, 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 the Jones cannot carry this play. Yeah. It has to be a, a production if yeah. you're going to be visual. Yeah. And on the other hand, we tend to, to not pick, to really pick the, the part language apart it, yeah. because you assume that well, a certain bravado, yeah. bravura, yeah. and good southern yeah. accent will yeah. No, it's a very, it's a very uh, well-written play. Yeah. Well, I always, uh, I mean, I, I always do this certainly with other playwrights, but even more so with O'Neill. I have total confidence that what it, what he wrote is all there for yeah. a purpose. Right. So it's my job to find out well what That's right. was it because he he told me a lot. He tells me a lot in the stage directions I yeah. read about the play. What some things he said about you know. But then I then there's another dimension that I have to go, which are the unexplainables. You know, they can't be put down on paper any place that you have to discover here, in this play or any play. And you got you got to take it. It's it's absolutely. He knew what he was doing. Yes. And if you trust it, if you trust that fact, then go and yeah. find it. Yeah. You're going to come up with some fantastic stuff. Because see, he's a great brain. And 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 the, every time I've approached this part before. The idea of Lord, Lord, it seemed like redundance. It seemed mm -hmm. like, and I never noticed why it came in when it did. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's an exciting play, and mm -hmm. you, you can really, you can really fill it with it, Jimmy. It's just to be a tremendous performance. <laughs>